In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a responsive multiple choice picture question. A couple of days ago, I had a viewer of my YouTube channel comment on one of my older videos, and it was basically the topic that we're covering today. However, it, instead of it being a fluid box responsive design, um, I suspect it was Captivate 8 or possibly Captivate 9, where I was using breakpoints for responsive design. So I thought, you know, maybe it's due to update this particular video. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can use pictures rather than words as the answers and distractors to a multiple choice question. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let me go over what's on my slide here. Uh, I've created a responsive design project, and in this slide, the very first thing I did was I added a bunch of fluid boxes, as you can see here. Uh, simply put, I decided that, you know, with the number of items that I was going to have on my screen, I thought that uh, six fluid boxes would be appropriate. The top one for the title of the slide, the next one would contain the question stem. The following one after that would contain the answers, which are pictures in this case. Uh, the next fluid box is for my submit button. And while you can't see it here, uh, or just a vague outline of it, you can see there's a feedback caption. And then finally, a continue button. So I created uh, six fluid boxes. A couple of things about fluid boxes is that on the utmost parent fluid boxes, I did squeeze in a column. If you start doing wrap to other column, things get really weird. But the one thing I can ensure with selecting squeeze in a column is that uh, everything will stay in the correct order on the slide. And you can make other decisions too. Like for example, in the fluid box where I have my images, I chose symmetrical. So it's going to not wrap one while keeping two above it. It will always keep like, you know, uh, a row of buttons or uh, a column of buttons or two by two, that sort of thing. But you can make your own choices as well. So let's kind of go over the objects that are on my slide here. So straightforward is a question title. Uh, the question stem is here. Um, don't worry too much about, you know, the, in this case, the text being cut off a little bit, because of course, if you click on the film strip icon, you can see here that, um, you know, I've got a minimum font size set. We could even lower this. And what that's going to do is take care of scaling the fonts so that they fit in the space that's provided. Um, I'm tempted to use uh, enable uniform text scaling so that my submit and continue button remain the same size. In fact, let's do that and just ensure that uh, that these items will, uh, if they do have to scale, they'll scale consistently or, um, you know, at the same rate as one another. So these particular objects here are actually shapes. I know the, the topic is multiple choice uh, picture questions. These are shapes, and rather than using the images themselves that I downloaded, I actually created a smart shape so that I could have an outline. I set those to be used as buttons. And of course, the fill was an image fill with a picture of the appropriate city here. I actually intend to have four of these. So let me duplicate the last one and kind of show you what's involved with this here. So I'm just going to press Control D on my keyboard here. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. That's a little weird. Let me go up to the parent here and set this much lower. Or perhaps 100%. Let's see what happens there. That's okay. For now, let's go horizontal and squeeze in a row just to work with them for right now. We can make decisions about the wrap options later. So what I did, let's go in and go into state view. And in this case here, it's already set up as a button. And the, the fill pattern, which I'm going to change now, I simply go into the fill pattern of image and then the fill pattern itself. And we will select the appropriate image here. Now this one, Montreal, which I believe is that image there, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check. Yes. 
So I'll switch that. Now, of course, I'm going to get this resize crop image. And, you know, if you felt it necessary to crop something out, you could do so. I'm okay with this here. I'm just going to click OK. And that becomes uh, Montreal. Now, obviously, uh, because it's, an, uh, it's a smart shape, you can add text to it. So just press F2 and we can write in what city that is. The, uh, just as a side note, I did delete the rollover in the down state of these objects, as you can see there, and created a custom state called selected. And the only difference between the normal state and selected is I changed the outline to indicate that this is a selected object. So when learners click on these objects, they'll change their appearance. The image will remain, uh, the title of the, the object will remain, but this uh, white outline turns into a green outline. So let's exit that there. We have our submit button here, nothing special about that. It's just a shape used as a button. And down here, I have another shape that I've created and it's going to be, I've labeled it uh, slide one underscore feedback. And its purpose will be to be a multi-state object that will simply display one of three possible feedback items. So the default is to just be transparent, no text. Uh, the correct state is, that's correct, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Uh, and I think it says something like press the continue button to proceed. Similarly, we've got this feedback where it's try again, that's incorrect. Try to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. Uh, please try again. And uh, if someone decides to press submit without selecting anything first, we're going to simply have please select an answer before pr uh, pressing submit, try again. So pretty straightforward. And then we have our continue button, which action will be just go to next slide. And uh, while I'm here, I'll turn on the hand cursor and disable the click sound. And we'll do the same thing for all of our buttons, actually, while we're doing that. And I can select all of my image buttons here and do the same thing for those. A key point about this continue button or next button, whatever you want to call it, uh, you're going to want to make it not visible in output because we're only going to display it once the learner has uh, taken this knowledge check and cor correctly answered the question. So let's do that. Just by clicking on this little eyeball, it becomes not visible in output. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create four variables to keep track of which of these answers has been selected. So we're going to go into the project drop down menu and select variables. And I'm going to add new. I like to start my variables with an underscore. That way I don't call them the same thing as an object elsewhere in Captivate. Uh, this way it maintains uniqueness uh, and avoids any kind of uh, technical issues. Sometimes when you uh, label two things the same thing, a, a variable and an object, uh, it causes problems. So in this case here, we'll just go Vancouver for one there. We don't need to assign an initial value. Toronto, underscore Ottawa, underscore um, Montreal. So I could go ahead and close the variables window. Now we're going to start writing our first advanced action and we'll write it for Vancouver, but then I'll show you an easy way to duplicate it for the remainder of these uh, buttons here. So let's go into project, select advanced actions, and we'll call the first one Vancouver. And in this case here, the very first thing we'll do before we forget is to assign the variable for Vancouver with a literal value of one. Now we need to also reset the other three variables in the event that you've already selected those before. So we'll uh, actually copy this line and paste it in three more times just to save you some keystrokes here. And we'll just change the second Vancouver to Ottawa, Toronto for the third, 
and uh, what's left here? Montreal with uh, that. And we'll change the value before I forget to zero. Okay, so that takes care of our tracking variables. The next thing we want to do is change the appearance of the button to indicate that it's been selected. So we're going to change the state of button one to selected, change the state of button two to normal, because again, we may have selected that before, change the state of button three to normal, and change the state of button three underscore nine, because I duplicated three, to normal as well. Uh, you can change that and you don't have to worry about your advanced action. So once I'm finished here, I can relabel the last one to be button four and it will update the advanced action automatically. One last thing I want to do, if I've already attempted this answer, it's going to show uh, my multi-state feedback caption to, you know, incorrect or incomplete or something like that. So when we make another selection, I want to revert this back to normal. So we'll do one more change state of, and in this case here, we'll use our feedback caption and we'll return it to normal there. So I can save this as an action, click OK, and now we can duplicate this for the other uh, buttons here. So let's click on the duplicate action or duplicate action. And if I just temporarily move this, I can see which ones I want to do. So this first one will be for uh, Toronto. We will change Vancouver to literally zero. And Toronto will be literally one. And in this case, button two is Toronto. So we'll make that selected and return button one back to normal here. And that's it. So let's update that action. Click OK. And once again, we'll duplicate it for Ottawa. Okay, so Ottawa will become the literal value of one. Toronto will change back to zero because we're keeping track that Ottawa has been selected. And uh, in this case here, we'll go normal and button three is Ottawa. So we'll show that as selected there. Update that action, click OK. And let's duplicate it once more, this time for Montreal. So we'll change the variable uh, for Ottawa back to zero and Montreal will become one. And, you know, upon re reflection, I should have called these buttons the names of the city. It would probably be a little bit easier to keep it straight, but I think we're, we're, I think we're okay here. And we'll change um, button three underscore nine, which will become button four. Um, to selected here. And let me show that to you. If I update this action, click OK, and close this for now. Let's relabel these buttons so that they actually make a lot more sense here. Vancouver, and I'll show you how smart Captivate is. Toronto, Ottawa, you know, and, and your instinct might be that you would have to rewrite those advanced actions. So let's go into advanced actions again, and we'll select Vancouver, and you'll see that it's changing the state of Vancouver now to selected Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal back to normal. Uh, let's just double check some of these to make sure that they're correct. Montreal selected. Ottawa selected, and yeah, so I think we're good to go here. Um, so we can close this. Now, while we're here, let's assign those advanced actions to uh, these buttons here. Here's a pro tip. If you select all of your buttons simultaneously, change the on success action to execute advanced actions, 
it'll select the first advanced action from the list. I can click in the scrap area to deselect and then just one by one change the second half of that step to the appropriate advanced action. So uh, we'll change this to Ottawa and this last one to Montreal. Now let's work on our submit advanced action. So we'll go into the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. And we will call this submit. And uh, we're going to actually have two decision tabs here. So well, let's rename the first one. And this will be correct. And it'll be a conditional advanced action. And we'll just simply say if our variable Montreal is equal to the literal value of zero, I can again cheat a little bit by copying this and pasting it in three more times so that we have uh, one for each of the variables. We'll just change the variable to Ottawa change the variable to Toronto and change this variable to Vancouver. And the correct answer in this case is Ottawa is the correct answer. So we'll change that to a literal value of one. So if that's correct, we're going to do a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change our feedback caption. So we will change it to the state that indicates uh, the correct answer. Right, so we've got a state for correct. And um, I'm gonna disable the buttons themselves so that you can't change the answer once you get it correct. So we will disable Montreal. Again, anytime you're doing multiples of the same command, you can cheat a little bit here and just paste that in a bunch of times and make a small change here. So the next thing we'll disable is Toronto and Ottawa and Vancouver. Okay, so those buttons will be disabled. We're also going to want to show the continue button because, of course, they've got it right and it's time to continue with the rest of their project there. So that's pretty good. I think that will do what we needed to do. If this isn't true, right? The answer is incorrect. So under else, what we're going to do is change the state of our feedback caption to try again. Okay. Now let's make one more, um, one more advanced action and we're going to duplicate this one here, but we're going to make some changes to that. So we'll call this incomplete. So this is when someone tries to press submit without making a selection first. In other words, all of these variables will have a value of zero. We're going to change our feedback caption to incomplete, and we don't need to disable the um, objects on screen or show the next button. We'll just do that. And we'll also get rid of this else action here. So we can delete that line there. Okay, we'll save this as an action, click OK, and close. So now we'll select our submit button, and instead of go to next slide, which is the default action in Captivate, we'll execute advanced actions, and we will choose the submit advanced action. So I think we're good to test this out. Let's preview. We'll do a live preview on devices here. In case you're unaware, the QR code that appears here is if you want to test it on your mobile device. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because my mobile phone is in the other room. But uh, you can click this uh, hyperlink to the live preview right on your computer. And we can see how this works here. And of course, the responsive will work. So I can actually resize this. And again, I could have chosen uh, different layouts for, uh, for this. I could uh, wrap to another row. I could uh, one row, one column, that sort of thing. So let's, uh, let's pr try pressing submit without 
a correct answer uh, or any answer for that matter. And I get the message, please select an answer before pressing submit. Try again. And of course, if I click on one of the options, the caption goes away, which is nice. And we can try getting a wrong answer. That's incorrect. Try to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. Please try again. And then the correct answer, as we know, is Ottawa. And we'll do that. Of course, now it locks my items. I can't press anything. I can't change my answer. But I can continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.